colorful explosion, rage gaming shaking, purple ring flash. Hey guys, Rage here, and it's time for the next episode of Rage Question Time. Now, I may sound a little bit different due to the fact I've just got my brand new mic, which I'll tell you about in short order. But first of all, fuck you, Hollow. So, yes, it's a Sennheiser PC 360 um, headset. I did have the 350. But, you know, it broke the other day as I commented on my channel, which about three people saw. And one guy called me a bastard for it, which was quite interesting. Uh, so I have I bought the upgraded version of it, the 360, and now I sound suave as hell. <laughs> I don't know why that required an evil laugh start, but <laughs> there's the middle. <laughs> and there's the end. So, let's get on with the first question. -y. Okay, then. Hello there, Rage. I have a question. Do I? Do I? Good man. Good. Of all the good qualities of Minecraft, what do you think makes it so addictive and such a popular game? It has so many imitators and mods that it should be, by gaming logic, look like a steaming pile of crap, but for some reason it's still one of the most... Wait, what? Still one of the most popular games online, as far as I can tell. Thanks for choosing this question. Live another good... No one can do the goodbye but me. But, yes, that is a interesting question, my Bob. Now, basically, it's so popular because it's infinite. And I don't mean that in the literal sense, although it can technically be infinite. The reason it's so popular is it, there's no actual goals itself that the game sets. So basically, your imagination is the limit to the end of the game. So if you think about that, imagine how many things that you can uh, find to do in Minecraft. Oh my god, that mountain would look so much better with a fortress part of it. And then you build that, and you're like, whoa, I need to build a pirate ship, and oh my god, and then, you know, you just keep going and going and going. The amount of things you can do is endless, and you create your own goals. Therefore, there's never a limit to how many self-goals you can create, there th therefore the game becomes so appealing. In a game with a linear sequence, or a storyline, or actual objectives, once you complete the objectives, you don't feel compelled to do anything else, because you've done what the game wants, so why would you create your own stuff? Whereas Minecraft, the game doesn't want you to do anything, it just wants you to enjoy this, basically, this sandbox of tools for you to have fun in, and, and you know, it really caters to the mentality of endlessness. It's like an MMO sandbox, even though it's not massive multiplayer, it's that kind of compellingness, because there's always something else to do. So, yes... I'll do for that one. I'm going to go on to the next question. No, I'm going to go on to the last question. What am I even saying? So, yes, the next question is as, as it follows. My god, if I recall, yeah, this is, this is. Hey, Rage! When I first tried Mountain Blade, back when it was in 0.6 version, I realised that it was one of a kind. I looked everywhere, but I couldn't find any other games that had the concept of a ne of medieval time, non-fantasy, and not hotkey-based game. The only games that had somewhat of the same concepts were Tess, Oblivion, that I love to play. What? No, yeah, Vinictus. Yeah, Vinictus is very good. I I'm having so much fun with Vinictus. And Worm. Worm is a more medieval simulator, not really a fighting game. More of a survival game, but it's still amazingly fun. Question is, why? Maybe because it's harder on a physics level of thing, or because it requires more effort to make things work out. I honestly believe that if a game really managed to put everything together really nicely, a huge and successful game would come out of that. I love medieval games, but I'm not really a fan of fantasy or hotkey-based games, and I'm keen on the idea that you can actually protect your allies from direct attacks by just putting a shield in front of you and not necessarily get hit by the enemy's attack. Hotkeys take the creativity away from you because it's already a pre- said attack, so you can't get creative on it, depending on what the attack is based on. You just click the key and use another attack and wait for, t for it to cool down, so you can reuse it again. What does that mean? Epic keyboard smashing, and that's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a game where you do what you want, when you want, the way you want, pretty much like Mountain Blade. But I found out that Mountain Blade can get pretty boring after a long while. Thanks for your time. Cheers, Fabio Sneaky. <gasps> God damn, man, that is one hell of a question. <sighs> okay. I don't I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to recommend one hell of an awesome medieval RPG. Well, it's not so much medieval as, it is technically fantasy. It's not medieval in terms of realistic medieval things. And I think, after I'll do that at the end. I think the reason why there's not many true medieval simulators is because if it was a true simulator, it would be quite dull, to be fair. Because... Honestly, it's, it's, it's just like having a true war game, where you get shot once and you're in hospital for three weeks and that's the duration of the game. 
So adding the fantasy element where you're, you know, you're heroic and extra strength and you can take things, it, it actually it makes it a lot more engaging. So having a true simulator is of a medieval game is not a thing you could really viably put out, and only to things like very hardcore gamers could you actually pass it off. Now, now actually, actually, but there are honestly, hang on, hang on, I completely just lost track of everything I was doing right there. My god. But yeah, the main reason is that it just, it wouldn't be a popular genre at all. Like, seriously, it would just, it, it would, it would be bad. Because, yeah, I'm, I'm just going around in circles here, I've said my opinion on it. Now, if you want a really good fantasy, it's half fantasy, it's, it's quite realistic in the way you fight. There's not, it's not hotkey based, it's just left click, right click, a bit like Vindictus, but it's an epic open world where you could do anything you want, and what you do changes everything. It doesn't feel like questing, it feels like you're really part of a gr um, growing and changing environment that you really help shape, and you are the, really the driving force on the massive open world with no loading screens that you can explore. And that game is Gothic Free. Now, honestly, I would it was my favourite game of all time, is Gothic Free, and I would recommend anyone, if you've even got a slight interest in amazing, open-ended, free RPGs. The combat system's great, everything about it's great, the voice acting, everything. Seriously, check it out, but make sure you play it with the latest community patch. 1.7.3, I think. So yes, that was quite a meaty question to say it was only a little answer. But yes. But no, but no. But yes, but no, but yes. And as as for the effort thing, it wouldn't really require much effort. I think there's more. There is simply is. There's not that many medieval uh, simulators, as it were, because really it's not that much of a, you know, market. I mean, how many people really would love a true medieval simulator without any form of fantasy? I don't think that many. I certainly wouldn't really like that. And I understand what you mean about hotkey. So yeah, go try Gothic Free. You'll you'll love that. So let's go on with the next question. I have been wondering, if Portal 3 ever comes out and if Wheatley comes back, what would your reaction be? Ah! <laughs> wow, that was. And if Guild Wars 2 Guild you'll create, what will the capacity of the Guild be? And do you speak any different language than English? And finally, do you know anything about Sweden? That's all sent from my ever- <laughs> Ah, I see. I've created like a thing with that now, haven't I? Dear God. Right. The Guild Wars 2 capacity will be as many as the game lets us have in the Guild. Every single person who wants to join is welcome. There is going to be no restrictions of any kind. The only restriction is if once you join, you're an asshole, I'm going to kick you. So, that's how that's going to work. So basically, I just want to create like a community Guild where everyone can help each other out on Guild Wars. Hopefully we can get a load of members early on and really help each other through the levelling. And, you know, just generally have a good time together. Me and Hollow are going to be co-running the guild, obviously, and it's it should just be a great time while we play the game. should really make it a lot more fun. Yes. Do you speak a different language? I speak Spanish. I used to speak fluent Spanish, because I did used to live in Spain, but I haven't used Spanish in a while, so it has waned. But I speak enough Spanish to get by in Spain. So, yeah, that's that for another. No, I'm not going to start speaking Spanish for a little bit to prove it. It's such a silly thing. Do you speak a language? Yes. Prove that you speak it by speaking it at me! <sighs> and do you know anything about Sweden? The only thing I know about Sweden, apart from cliches, is that they have incredibly fast internet speeds that I want. Give me them. But anyway, let's go on to the next question. So, the next question is... Hi, Rage. I'd like to know what the first video games you played as a child. Mine was Sonic the Hedgehog for Master System 2, and this was the first game I finished. Tell us about your first video game experiences and how you felt when you finished the first game. When I'd done that, I was so proud of myself with my eight years old. Have you never progressed past eight-year-old England? No, I'm joking. Right. Yeah. Oh, God, that was insane. <laughs> Sorry for my English. You know the stuff. Given you from Portugal, that was quite good. I take back what I tried to half say. So, my first ever gaming experience was what was my f that is that's a hard question to answer actually hmm <laughs> I'm gonna say the first game I ever played was Age of Empires on the computer the very very original Age of Empires and I love that game to bits although it hasn't aged well I tried playing it again the other day the other day other day <laughs> other day and it just wasn't fun also another game that I got into very early was the first console that I got which was Nintendo 64 <laughs> which was still a very entertaining console 
the first game I played on that was Super Mario 64, which I still, th <laughs> which I still think is one of the best um, Mario games going. I realise that if the audio doesn't sync up correctly with the video footage, I've just been randomly laughing at nothing. So that's awkward. But yes, Nintendo 64. I played Star Fox. I played X Zero. X Zero Racing and Super Mario 64. Those were my main proper game experiences, and you know I, I enjoyed the hell out of them. I mean, why wouldn't you? They were very good games. Some of them still hold up today, to be honest. So yes, let's go on to the next. Actually, do I? Yeah, I've got time for one more question, because you know I'm on a time limit. There's a guy looking at me and tapping his watch, and it's just, uh, oh, oh, god, god damn it. Anyway, yes. Hey, Great Rage. Liking it so far. I have a few questions for you. What was your progression in Warcraft on Mortal K? Gold spammers were a hassle to me. Did everybody... Did you ever buy gold, or did you also not agree with buying gold? If you were to sum up your gaming history in three words, what would they be and why? Keep you, keep up the great work with the videos, and I'll continue to watch the show, whether you pick my questions or not. Wither. Peace, Strylek. Sent from my iPhone. Oh, ah! But yes, my progression in Mortal K was everything. Wattle K was my main raiding season. I did a bit in BC, didn't really do any in Kata, but Wattle K is when I really got into it and pretty much did everything under the sun. few hard modes I missed, but mo I'd, I'd say I completed about 85% of all the raids of my guild before it. Before it had like some guild drama for all wild players and all that is, and it broke up and stopped raiding, and that, that I pretty much gave up at that point, because it's just not worth the effort. Scheduling your life to play WoW is just... It, it gets to the point where you're like, why am I doing this? Gold spammers. Well, gold spammers are always a hassle, but they're not really that much of a hassle. See, what me and uh, the other people I played WoW with used to do is turn gold spammers into a game. So when you'd get whispered by a gold seller, what you had to do is try and then sell them gold. See, I would get whispered by a gold seller and they go, I'll give you 10,000 gold, right? 50 quid. Set up a time and a place and you can have my gold. Honestly, it's good gold. I will give you this gold very cheap, yes? And then they wouldn't whisper me again. It's actually quite hilarious. We've basically seen who could troll our respective gold spammers. But as for agreeing or disagreeing, I don't actually care either way. If people want to buy gold, that's up to them and they're taking the risk. And I, w I will admit that I have bought gold once back when I was... I'd play WoW. I'd played WoW for about a month, and I was frustrated that I couldn't afford anything. Before I realised it's actually incredibly easy to make thousands and thousands in that game with no real effort. But yes, I am quite ashamed of it. But still. So yeah, I don't really care if people do it or not. It's entirely up to them. And Blizzard have basically implemented buying gold into the game now anyway, so they can you know get off their high horse about it. As far as I'm concerned. If you'd sum up your gaming history in three words, I'm gonna go for. Pretty damn fun. Yeah, I know, I could have come up with something better, but I think that's pretty good, to be honest. Or, how about... No, I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. Ever-changing fun. Yeah, I'm going to go for that one. Ever-changing th fun. Because games move at such a rate that while they're always fun, the uh, what's what's fun at the moment is constantly changing. And, you know, you gotta you got to keep up with it. If you fall behind on games, catching up feels like a mammoth task. It really does. So I'm going to go with ever-changing fun. I like that. Ever-changing fun to describe the games industry. How about that? So, yes, that will do for today. As always, send in more questions. I've actually got quite a good stock at the moment. But still, I've got about five left to do for next time. So, yeah, keep them coming in. The address is on screen, as always. So, yes, my name has been Rage. Ah, goodbye.